their students. Enzymes are biological catalysts and speed up the rate of chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy required to initiate a chemical reaction. All enzymes are proteins in nature except for ribozymes. Enzyme assays are methods carried out in the laboratory to measure enzyme activity. Enzyme activity is a measure of the quantity of active enzyme present in a solution or in simpler terms the amount of product formed or substrate utilized per unit time. Different factors such as substrate concentration, temperature and pH affect enzyme activity. Today, we will be carrying out this experiment using the enzyme amylase. Amylase is an enzyme that carries out the hydrolysis of starch and converts it into a disaccharide known as maltose. The enzyme is present abundantly in nature and is produced by many different bacteria and fungi. In human body, the enzyme is produced and is present in the saliva as well as pancreatic juice. The assay for alpha amylase can be done using iodine solution. Iodine reacts with starch to give a blue-black color. The intensity of this color gives an idea about the amount of starch that has been hydrolyzed or is still present in the sample. Today, we will be checking the effect of three factors on enzyme activity, that is, substrate concentration, pH and temperature. To proceed with this experiment, we will require phosphate buffer. For the preparation of phosphate buffer, we will need the solution of potassium dihydrogen phosphate and a solution of disodium hydrogen phosphate. These two solutions can be mixed together in varying amounts to get phosphate buffer of pH 5, 6, 7 and 8. We will also require starch solution. This starch solution can be prepared by dissolving starch directly in the phosphate buffer. To check the effect of substrate concentration on the activity of alpha amylase, we will prepare four different starch solutions of different concentrations, that is 0.5%, 0.5%, one point five per cent and two per cent. All four solutions have been prepared using phosphate buffer of pH 7. To proceed with the experiment, we will take four test tubes and label them according to the starch concentration, that is 0.5%, 1%, 1.5%, and 2%. Next, we will transfer 2 ml of the starch solution to each test tube. We will first transfer 2 ml of the starch solution to each test tube.
Next, we will add 1 ml of alpha amylase solution to each test tube. The mouth of these test tubes will be covered with aluminium foil and these test tubes will be incubated at 37 degree centigrade for 10 minutes. To check the effect of pH on the activity of alpha amylase, we will be using buffers of four different pH, that is pH 5, pH 6, pH 7, and pH 8. This time, we will prepare 1% starch solution in each of these buffers, so that at the end we will have starch solution of pH 5, pH 6, pH 7 and pH 8. Now, we will simply repeat the steps we carried out to check the effect of substrate concentration on enzyme activity. We will take 2 ml of each star solution in a labeled test tube and add 1 ml of the enzyme that is alpha amylase to it. We will then cover the mouth of the test tube with aluminium foil and place it in an incubator at 37 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes. To check the effect of temperature on enzyme activity, we first need to define our temperature range. The temperature range that we will be using today ranges from 10 degrees centigrade to 45 degrees centigrade with increments of almost 15 degrees centigrade in between. We will be using temperature of 10 degrees centigrade, 25 degrees centigrade, 37 degrees centigrade and 45 degrees centigrade to check at which temperature does amylase work best. To proceed with this experiment, we will take 2 ml of 1% starch solution, pH 7, in each test tube and add to it 1 ml of amylase solution. Then, we will place each test tube at its temperature for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we will remove the test tubes from the incubator. Next, to each test tube, we will add 0.5 ml of 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid. HCl functions as a stopping solution here and inhibits enzyme activity.
we will then add 0.5 ml or 500 microliter of iodine solution to each test tube. Iodine will react with any residual starch present in the sample to give a blue-black color. The intensity of this blue-black color will give us an idea about the amount of starch still present in the sample and hence the activity of amylase. The intensity of this color will be measured through a spectrophotometer. Next, we will proceed to the spectrophotometric analysis whereby we will measure the absorbance of each solution at 620 nanometers. To begin with, we will first need to use distal water as a control and set the point value as zero. Fill the cuvet carefully with distal water. Ensure that you do not touch the sides of the cuvet through which the light beam has to pass in the spectrophotometer. Wipe the sides of the cuvet using a clean tissue paper and place the cuvet in the position in the spectrophotometer. Since this is a double beam spectrophotometer, we will need to place two cuvets.
you will notice that the absorbance of water at 620 nanometer has been set as zero. We will then proceed to take the absorbance of our samples. Carefully remove one of the cuvettes Discard the water and add your sample. Clean the sides of the cuvette and then place it inside the spectrophotometer to take the reading. Ignoring the minus sign, you can see that the reading for this sample comes out to be 1.159. We will then proceed to the next sample. Carefully discard the solution or you can pour it back into the test tube. Then clean the skewet using deionized distilled water. The cuvette needs to be washed multiple times to ensure that there is no residual solution in the cuvette. Once the cuvette is clean, gently tap it on a piece of tissue paper to remove any excess water. Then, add the next sample solution in the cuvette. You need to repeat this process for all samples and note the absorbance readings that you obtain. Once the spectrophotometric analysis is complete, you can plot a graph of the absorbance against the substrate concentration, pH and temperature. When you plot the readings, you will get your graphs like this. We will be discussing these graphs one by one. If you observe the graph of substrate concentration, you will note that as the substrate concentration increases, the rate of enzyme activity or absorbance also increases. However, that is only valid till a certain point, encircled by the dotted pink line. At this point, the enzyme or the amount of enzyme becomes the limiting factor whereby the rate of reaction is decided by the amount of enzyme present. Addition of substrate does not increase the rate of reaction. Next, when you observe the graph for pH, you will observe that as the pH increases, the absorbance increases initially and then decreases sharply. This point highlighted by the pink arrow is known as the optimal pH, which is the pH at which the enzyme works best or shows maximum activity. Beyond this, the enzyme does not work well because the enzyme is protein in nature and changes in pH disturb the ionic interactions of the protein, thereby leading to denaturation of the enzyme. Next, when we see the graph for temperature, we observe that initially, as the temperature increases, the rate of reaction increases up till a certain point, after which it starts to decrease. This point 
highlighted by the pink arrow is known as the optimum temperature which is the temperature at which the enzyme shows its maximum activity. Before this, you can see that the rate of reaction is low. This is because at these temperatures, the rate of reaction is slow because there is not enough energy leading to successful collision of molecules. Since the enzyme and the substrate molecules are not colliding effectively, the rate of reaction is slow. However, beyond the optimum temperature, the rate of reaction slows down because the enzyme being protein in nature is denatured at high temperatures. Dear students, these are the three graphs that you will obtain when you study the effect of different factors on enzyme activity. Depending upon the source of the enzyme and its type, the shape of the graph can slightly vary and the pH and temperature of each enzyme can vary. However, generally these rules are applicable to all enzymes.